Okay, welcome everyone to our ZAC seminar. It's my big pleasure to introduce Taku Suzuki from Utsunomiya University in Japan. And Taku will speak about high order minimal families of rational curves on Fana manifolds. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, and I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to talk today. Uh, in this talk, I will introduce a new notion named high order minimal families of rational curves which is an extended notion of minimal families of rational curves. And I will explain two main theorems as its application. Uh, first, let us review minimal families of rational curves. Uh, throughout this talk, let X be a fundamental and let N be the dimension of X. Here, yeah, uh, manifold means a uh, smooth projective variety over the complex field in this talk. And a uh, final manifold means a manifold whose first chain class is positive. For example, a uh, project space, uh, called hypersurface, uh, Lesmanian, and so on. We consider such higher manifolds. Then it is known that any final manifold is covered by rational curves. This fact was shown by Morris' famous manuscript in which had some conjecture on characterizations of project spaces was proved. Uh, after Morris' result, the uh, deformation theory of rational curves has played an important role in higher dimensional algebraic geometry. This talk, uh, we consider rational curves on X passing through a fixed general point P. And from now on, let H be a minimal family of such rational curves. Here, a minimal rational curve means a rational curve with minimal anti algorithm. And a family means a uh, reduced component of a uh, modular space. Then it is known that if P is a general point, then this family H is also a manifold uh, that is a smooth projective variety as a modular space. I give some examples of minimal families of rational curves. The simplest example is the case where X is a project plane P2. Uh, in this case, of course, lines are minimal rational curves. And each line on P2 passing through a fixed point corresponds to each point of a projective line. So the family of such lines H is isomorphic to a projective line as a modular space. More generally, if X is a project space of dimension N, then H is isomorphic to a projective space of dimension N minus one. Next, let X, X be a quadratic surface Q2, then there are two lines passing through a fixed point. So H is a point corresponding to either line as a modular space. More generally, if X is a quadratic hypersurface of dimension N, then we know that H is isomorphic to a quadratic hypersurface surfaces of a quadratic hypersurface of dimension n minus two. For other examples, if X is a hypersurface of degree P with sufficiently large dimension, then it is known that H is isomorphic to a complete intersection of hypersurfaces of degrees from two to D. And if X is a Gassmannian, 
and it is known that H is isomorphic to the product of two projective spaces. Uh, in this way, uh, for one minor X, we have another minor H as a minimal family of rational class. Then in general, the dimension of H is smaller than the dimension of X. And it is equal to just n minus one, if and only if X is isomorphic to a project, projective space. This fact is obtained by Cho, Miyaoka, and Shepard Barron's characterizations of projective spaces. Now I explain the notion of higher order minimal families of rational class. From now on, we use this notation x to h when x and h satisfy our situation, namely x is a far manifold and h is a minimal family of rational class on x uh, passing through a fixed general point. Then we can define higher order minimal families by repeating this operation. Uh, for example, uh, if X is a project space, then a uh, minimal family is also a project space. So we can repeat this operation like this. In general, if uh, minimal family H1 is also a fun manifold, then we can define a second minimal family H2 as a modular uh, minimal family of rational class on H1. Uh, in the same way, we can define an R's minimal family HR if all the families H1 to HR minus one are Moreover, we define an invariant NX as the maximal length of R. Maximal length R of such chains. By the way, the, this notation NX comes from the initial of Professor Nagai, who was also a speaker of this seminar in April. Uh, thanks. To his comments, I got an inspiration for this invariant. So I use this notation. Now I give some examples of high order minimal formats. First, if X is a project space PN, then the chain of high order minimal formats consists of Project spaces of dimension decreasing by one, like this. And finally, uh, the NS minimal family is a point. And the uh, chain stops here. Because uh, point is not a uh, one. So the length of the chain is equal to just N. Next, if X is a quadratic hypersurface QN, then the chain of high order minimal families consists of quadratic hypersurfaces of dimension decreasing by two, like this. And the last family is a point. So the length of the chain is equal to the half of N. If n is even and uh, half of n plus one, if n is odd. Well, we can see from these examples that nx is not bigger than the dimension of x. This is because the dimension of higher of the minimal families decreases strictly. And if and x is equal to just n, namely if the dimension of higher order minimal families decreases by just one, then x must be a 
be isomorphic to a projective, projective space. According to Cho Miao and Shefal Barons, is not. So from the on, we consider the following natural question. Uh, when is NX, NX large? Namely, what kind of fun manifolds X does have a long chain of higher order minimal families? The following result, which was obtained by Arau von Kastbet in 2012, is related to this question. The statement is as follows. If the second chain character of a fun manifold X is positive, then any minimal family H is also a fun manifold. In addition, uh, if the third chain character of X is non-negative and uh, dimension H is at least two, then the second chain character of H is also positive. Here, uh, in the first statement, since the first minimal form H is a form manifold, we get a second minimal form. So this means that NX is at least two. Moreover, in the second statement, since the second chain character H is positive, we can apply the first statement for H instead of X, we get a second minimal form for H. That is a sad minimal form for X. So this means that an X is at least three. Thus, we can regard these results to give sufficient conditions for NX is at least two or three. So our natural question is, how about next steps? Namely, how about the case where NX is at least four, five, six, and so on? Then the first main theorem of this talk is an answer to this question up to 100. The statement is as follows. Uh, let R be a positive integer up to 100 and assume that up to the R's chain character of X are non-negative. And the dimension of our first minimal family H is at least r square minus r minus one. Then nx is at least r. Uh, I will explain later why we assume that r is up to 100. This is the first method. And uh, cases where r is two and three correspond to the above results. Here, the second chain vector x is assumed to be positive in the above results, but no negative in the main term. So the assumption for the chain characters is weaker. On the other hand, the, the assumption for the dimension of h is stronger. Indeed, in the case where r is three, the dimension of H is at least three square minus three minus one, is five, at least five. So it is stronger than this assumption. But without considering such slight differences, we can regard the main theorem as a generalization of the other results. Now, before explaining the proof of this theorem, I mentioned its application. Actually, this invariant NX 
is related to the dimension of rational manifolds containing X. Uh, I cannot explain in detail today, but the conclusion of the main theorem implies that X is covered by rational manifolds of dimension R, except some cases. So this theorem says the positivity of the chain characters X with some additional assumptions imply that X is covered by higher dimensional rational manifolds. Thus, we can regard this theorem as a higher dimensional version of Morris result. Any found manifold is covered by rational class. Okay. Now I explain the outline of the proof of the main theorem. The claim is uh, the following. If there is a chain of higher order minimal families of length i smaller than r, then the last family hi is also a fun micro. Namely, the first chapter of hi is positive. If this claim can be proved, then we can extend the chain up to the R's minimal family. So we can obtain the conclusion NX is at least R. Then the following result uh, by Arau van Kastabet is a key fact for calculation of the chain character Jam class of HI. This result said that the chain character of minimal form H can be expressed as a form, such a formula containing the chain characters of a fun manifold of X. Here, I cannot explain in detail, but T in the form in this formula is a certain map from the group of cycles on X to the group of cycles on H. And BM is the Bernoulli number. Here, let us review the Bernoulli numbers. The Bernoulli numbers are defined by this formula the ex ex exceptional ex exponential generating function of the Bernoulli numbers is this function. Especially B0 is one, B1 is one half, B2 is one six, B3 is zero, B4 is minus one thirtieth, and so on. The Bernoulli numbers are related to the computation of sum of powers the sum of these powers of the first and positive integers can be expressed this formula containing the Bernoulli numbers. This formula is often called Seki Bernoulli's formula. Here it is of the subject, but Seki was a Japanese mathematician in the 17th century. And he is said to have discovered the Bernoulli numbers slightly before Bernoulli. Indeed, this is Seki's manuscript in which the Bernoulli numbers appear. Here, the, these Chinese characters from right to left mean one and plus one half plus uh, one six zero and minus one third is the answer. Uh, there are these are the Bernoulli numbers. Well, let's return to the subject. Uh, we can calculate the chunk character of a uh, minimal farming by this result. Then we can also calculate the uh, chain characters of higher order minimal families 
by applying this result repeatedly. For example, when we want to calculate the first chunk plus H3, first we express it by the first chunk plus and the second chunk plus of H2 by applying this result. And next, we express them by up to the third chunk characters of H1 by applying this result again. And finally, we express them by up to the fourth chunk characters of X by applying this result again. In this way, we can express the first chunk class of H3 as a formula containing the chunk characters of In general, we see that the Js chunk character of Hi can be expressed as such a linear combination containing the chunk characters of X. Here, each coefficient Aijk is a rational number, which is determined by the following equations. The former equation is an initial condition and the latter equation is a recurrence equation. I can solve this recurrence equation, then we can calculate the uh, character of HI. But uh, I'm afraid to say that it was too difficult for me and I, I could not solve it completely. But I could solve it only in the case where k is zero and one. That is only the first two coefficients in this linear combination. Uh, I obtained that uh, aij zero is equal to this simple formula and aij one can be expressed as this complicated formula. We can prove these formulas by applying Seki Bellamy's formula and some properties of binomial coefficients. It was one of the hardest works in the proof to find this expression. Now, recall that we want to prove the positivity of the Chan class of HI. And by using these formulas, we can calculate the first two terms of it. And we see that the sum of them is just positive. By using the assumption for the dimension H, actually this assumption is a technical assumption. On the other hand, we see that the positivity of the Chan class The positivity of the chunk characters of X is preserved by the map T. So it is enough to show that you have to show the positivity of the other every coefficient AI1K. However, I could not obtain explicit expressions of these coefficients as mentioned. So I calculated them up to 100 numerically by using a computer and checked that all of them are positive. This is why we assume that R is up to 100. And consequently, we obtain the positivity of the Chan class of the Chai as desired. The above is the outline of the proof. Here, actually, after my paper appeared in archive, this theorem has been confirmed for every positive integer r by Nagaoka. He has obtained 
expi explicit expressions of these coefficients and proved the positivity of them by using methods of combinatorics. By the way, there are still open problems related to this invariant NX. Uh, one of them is a classification problem of one manifold X with large NX. I mentioned earlier that project spaces have the largest NX, but it seems difficult to know what manifold X have the second largest NX. Uh, I have conjectures. Uh, I conjecture that if nx is equal to n minus one, then x is isomorphic to either the blow up of a project space along a linear subspace of dimension two, or quadratic hypersurface of dimension three. And in addition, in the case of pika number one, I conjecture that if nx is at least uh, half of n plus one, then x is isomorphic to a quadratic hypersurface of odd dimension, except a uh, project space. These are open problems. And as mentioned later, the second main theorem of this talk is a special version of these conjectures. Uh, roughly speaking, the special version means a line version of higher order minimal families of rational curves. Okay, now uh, I introduce higher order families of lines as a uh, line version of higher order minimal families of rational curves in order to explain the second main theorem. Uh, from the on, let X be a final manifold, which is embedded in a fixed group, embedded in a fixed project space and covered by lines. And let H be a family of lines on X passing through a fixed point. Uh, we use this notation x to h when x and h are in this situation. Then we can define higher order families of lines by repeating this population. But here, note that each line on a uh, manifold x passing through a uh, point p can be regarded as one of tangent lines at the point. So a uh, family of such lines H can be regarded as a sub-variety of the projectivized tangent space at the point, which is the modular space of tangent lines at the point and isomorphic to a project space of dimension n minus one. This means that a uh, family of lines H has a natural embed. So if a uh, family of lines H1 is also a fun manifold and covered by lines with respect to the embedding in the project by the tangent space, then we can define a second family of lines H2 as a family of lines on H1. In the same way, we can define an R's minimal, R's family of lines, HR, over, we define a new invariant, SX, as the maximum length R of such chains of families of lines. Now I give some examples of high order families of lines. If X is a project space or a quadratic hypersurface 
then the chain of high order families of lines is almost the same as the chain of high order minimal families of rational cars because lines on a project space or a quadric hypersurface are minimal rational cars. So in the case of Pn, Sx is equal to just n. And in the case of Qn, Sx is equal to the half of n, if n is even, and the half of n minus one, if n is odd. Here in the case of odd dimension, mark that uh, conic curve Q1 is a rational curve, but it is not a line in the project by the tangent space. So the chain stops here. Now I give two more examples. One is a Grassmannian of type 2M, which parameterizes two dimensional linear subspaces of the M dimensional vector space. Uh, this is a uh, fun micro of dimension of double of m minus four, even dimension. Then the chain of families of lines is as follows. The first family is the product of p1 and p m minus three embedded in the project by the tangent space by single embedding. And the uh, second family is either point or PM minus four. The point correspond to P1 and PM minus four comprises lines on PM minus two. And the third family is PM minus five. Da, da, da. So the length of the longer chain, uh, there are two chains of families of lines, but Sx is equal to the length of the longer chain is so m minus two. That is just a half of its dimension. The last one is a symplectic Grassmannian of type 2M, which is obtained by a hyperplane section of the Grassmannian of the, type, the same type. But this is also a fun marker of dimension the double, double of M minus five, odd dimension. Then the chain of families of lines is as follows. The first family is the blow up of P M minus three along a linear subspace of dimension two. And the second family is P M minus five, which parameterizes lines intersecting the exceptional border of the blow up. And the third family is P M minus five, three M minus six, da, da, da. So the length of the chain is equal to M minus three. That is the half of M minus one. Now we see from this example that this invariant SX as well as Nx is smaller than or equal to the dimension of x, n. And the equality holds if and only if x is a linear project distance. By the way, uh, I mentioned earlier that the invariant Nx is related to the dimension of rational manifolds contained in X. On the other hand, this invariant SX is related to the dimension of linear spaces containing X. Precisely speaking, if 
Sx is at least a certain positive integer r. Then we see that x is covered by linear spaces of dimension r. The last sketch of the proof of this proposition is as follows. By assumption, we get a chain of families of lines from H1 to HR. Then first, we take a point from the last family HR. Then this point corresponds to a line on HR minus one. Next, each point of this line corresponds to a line on HR minus two, like this. And we see that the, the union of such lines is a plane on HR minus two. Next, each point of this plane corresponds to a line on H R minus three. And we see that the union of such lines is a linear space of dimension three, on H R minus three. In this way, we finally get a linear subspace of dimension R containing X. And we see that X is covered by such linear spaces. Now, mark that the opposite direction of this proportion does not hold. For example, let X be a complete intersection of two quadratic hypersurfaces in P7, then X is covered by planes, but the first family of lines is a complete intersection of two quadratic hypersurfaces in P4, which is not covered by lines. So the length of the chain is one. In this example, the opposite direction does not hold. In other words, Sx may not be equal to the maximum dimension of linear spaces in general. Well, there have been many investigations on projects manifolds covered by large linear spaces. One of the most famous results among them is the following result which was obtained by Sato in 1997. The statement is as follows. Uh, if a project's manifold X of dimension N, possibly not a uh, fun manifold, is covered by linear spaces of dimension at least the half of N, then X is asymmetric to one of these three manifolds. Uh, project space bundle, uh, quadratic hypersurface of even dimension, and the grass mining type 2M. Here, the last two manifolds are uh, covered by linear spaces of dimension just the half of N. By applying this result, we also obtain classifications of fun manifold with fun manifold X with large SX as follows. If SX is equal to N minus one, then X is covered by linear spaces of dimension N minus one. So it must be a project space bundle over a curve. And we see that it is isomorphic to either the product of P1 and P n minus n minus one or the blow up of P n along the uh, linear subspace of formation two, since X is a far more
Moreover, in the case of pick number one, if Sx is at least the half of n, then x is covered by linear spaces of dimension at least the half of n. So it must be either a linear project space, a quadric hypersurface, or a hypersurface by applying Sato's result. Here in the last two cases, Sx is equal to just the half of n, as mentioned earlier. By the way, the notation of this invariant Sx comes from not the initial of my name Suzuki, but the initial of Sato, because this invariant is related to Sato's result. Now we consider the uh, next step of the lava provision. Uh, however, the uh, next step of Sato's result has been not known. Besides speaking, a uh, classification problem of project manifolds of odd dimension n about by linear spaces of dimension that half of n minus one is an open problem. Even in the case of Pika number one, uh, this seems a very difficult problem. So instead of this problem, because the classifications of Final manifolds X for pick number one such that SX is equal to the half of N minus one. This problem is a weaker version of the above open problem because the assumption is stronger. Then the second main theorem of this talk is the answer to this problem. The statement is as follows. Uh, let X be an empty fund manifold of pika number one, such that Sx is equal to the half of n minus one. Then X is isomorphic to one of the following five manifolds. First is a quadric. The second is a symplectic class manifold type 2M. The third is a cubic hypersurface in P4. The fourth is a complete intersection of two quadrant hypersurfaces in P5. And the last is a three dimensional linear section of grass mining of type 2,5 in P9. Here, the last three manifolds are of dimension three. This is the second base theorem. And finally, I explain the outline of the proof of this theorem. Now, by the assumption for Sx, uh, Sx is equal to the half of n minus one, we get a chain of families of lines from H1 to HM, where M is a number such that N is equal to the double of M plus one. Now we divide into two cases. Uh, one is the case where neither of the families is a linear space. And the other is the case where at least one of the families is uh, linear space. The first, in the former case, we easily obtain the conclusion as follows. Since neither of the families is a uh, linear space in the case, the dimension of them decreases by at least two, 
like this. So we obtain that the dimension of H1 is large. On the other hand, we see that the fan index Rx is equal to the dimension of H1 plus two from a fundamental theorem of the deformation theorem. So the fan index is at least n minus one. Here, the fan index is defined as the maximum number r such that the anti canonical divisor is equivalent to r times some divisor L. And from uh, Kobayashi and Ochai's result, that uh, if x, uh, if the fan index is at least n, then it is isomorphic to either a product, projective space or a quadratic type of surface. And which does the result provide is classifications of fan manifolds with fan index just n minus one. So by verifying chains of families of lines in every case, you can check that X must be isomorphic to either a quadratic hypersurface or one of these three-dimensional models. This is the formal case. Next, we consider the latter case, that is the case where at least one of the families is a linear space. We suppose that neither of from H1 to HI is a linear space and from HI plus one to HM a linear space. Then we see from some properties of families of lines that the difference of dimensions between HI minus one and HI is large. And by verifying every possible situation, we obtain that H1 is a manifold of dimension M, which is not a linear space. And H2 is a linear space of dimension M minus two and that, that, that. This is the only situation such that the length of the chain is just M. This means that the length of the chain for H1 is equal to M minus one. That is the dimension of H1 minus one. So it follows from the area progression, like classifying such manifolds that H1 must be isomorphic to either the product or the blow up. Now, H1 is embedded non degeneratively in the projected by the tangent space of X that is a project space whose dimension is equal to just the double of the dimension of H1. In general, if we want to know whether a manifold can be embedded in a certain project space, then we have to check the dimension of its second variety. So by verifying the second varieties of these two Manifolds, we see that H1 must be the blow up and embedded in a certain one. And consequently, we obtain that X is isomorphic to the symplectic last manual in this case. By applying one and least recent result, which characterizes symplectic glass by families of lines.
the above is the outline of proof. And that is all. And if you are interested in uh, two main theorems of this talk, please see also my papers in the archive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Taka. Let's thank the speaker. Just a second. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Questions, please. Uh, I have a general question. Uh, for example, for uh, can this theorem be generalized for log fauna varieties with boundaries under certain conditions? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Only smooth case. Yeah, yeah, but for example, like for like an orbifold case, like quasi smooth, like. Um... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know. Okay. okay. Uh, any other questions to Taco? Let me check the chat. Okay. There are no questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, to Taco, let's thank uh, Taco again. Taco, thank you very much yes. for a very nice talk. Let me, thanks here. Okay, thank you very much, thanks everyone. And uh, Taco, thank you very much for giving the talk at uh, Doug's seminar. And see everyone uh, on uh, Thursday, yeah, on uh, Aline, uh, uh, Aline's talk. Yeah, thank you, see you. Thank you Stay very safe. Much. Bye, thank you.